animals and plants are distributed around the world naturally. Their individual adaptations make certain habitats ideal and others not. Throughout history, humans have moved animals and plants to new areas, sometimes successfully and at other times producing disastrous results. In today's Science Bite, museum scientist John Dabosky talks about introduced species and how they've become a part of our daily lives. Many of the animals found in our beautiful city parks that you've come to love and hate are actually a mixture of native and non-native species. Humans have intentionally and unintentionally introduced animals and plants across the planet for thousands of years. The European starling was introduced into New York City's Central Park in 1890. From those 60 to 100 original birds, there are now over 200 million in North America. And the fox squirrel was introduced into California beginning 100 years ago by folks from the East that miss their tree squirrels. And now these squirrels are displacing the native western gray squirrels in Los Angeles. Sometimes animals were introduced by mistake or unwittingly as stowaways on ships. Introductions like these have tracked human movements across the globe for thousands of years. The Black Death that devastated Europe in the 1300s was actually transmitted by fleas found on black rats that followed trade routes from Asia. More recently, people have bought exotic pets and when they become too large or uncontrollable, they release them into the wild. For example, you've probably heard a lot about those Burmese pythons in the Florida Everglades. Turns out they have no natural predators in that environment. Therefore, they've had a huge negative impact on some of the mammal species there, such as possums, bobcats, deer, and raccoons. Some species are not really invasive, but due to a lack of predators and an abundance of food, live comfortably among us within our cities. For example, in this park, it's not uncommon to see coyotes, foxes, or the ever-present non-migrating geese. Islands are particularly sensitive to invasive species. I'm here in the Campbell Island diorama here at the museum. The brown rat was introduced to this remote island south of New Zealand about 200 years ago and nearly eradicated the native birds and vegetation. However, there is a happy ending to this story. About 10 years ago, the brown rat was eradicated from this island and it's starting to recover. In Hawaii, the nene was nearly wiped out by mongooses in the 1950s. In a twist of fate, mongooses were brought in to help control the rats on sugarcane plantations and quickly became a problem themselves. This is an example of how short-term thinking can create a domino effect. Humans have been moving animals and plants across the planet for thousands of years. And hopefully we're learning from our mistakes and we'll make better decisions in the future. But what do you think the most invasive species really is?